welcome back everyone, it is your one and only Matsmas, and thank you for being on today's video, I really appreciate you stopping by. You know, my channel for the most part focuses on military weapons and firearms, but it's interesting to me that there's still some very primitive forms of combat out there, and one of them being the bayonet. I've had a lot of discussions with military members around the world, including obviously my own previous serving military career in the British Army and in the Canadian Army, as to the versatility or the viability of using a bayonet in modern warfare. There's a lot of debate and heated debate about whether or not the bayonet is still useful. The real scary part is that some militaries have completely abandoned the training and use of bayonets in general. And you may ask yourself, why are they doing that? Why have they abandoned something that an infantryman or a soldier in general would potentially have to use if the worst case scenario ever happened? Well, it's pretty simple. For the most part, it comes down to money. Soldiers are really a lot of money to train. From initial training to further training, it's expensive stuff. And to get a soldier to do, whether it be one or two days or even a week's worth of extra martial art training or close encounter training or bayonet training can be costly. And for most militaries around the world, it's not something they invest a lot of time and money in. As you can see here with the beautiful US Marine Corps, they are training in close quarters battle and some bayonet training. This is actually still part of their program, however the US Army for the most part have disbanded the use of bayonet training because it's just not part of their requisite. I disagree with this completely and I really do think that it is a core skill any soldier or any serving frontline combat marine, airman, sailor, whatever it may be, should have the requirement and need to do so. And you're wondering, well why Matsmus? It's not like we're ever going to need to use bayonets, and it's funny you say that, I hear that a lot when I have this discussion with people over bayonets. In Afghanistan, with the British Army, there were units that were told to deploy their bayonets from their scabbards, place them onto the end of the rifles, and told to expect the enemy to come in such close quarters that they would actually have to potentially engage them. It's scary stuff. And do you know what's even more scary? This guy. <laughs> But in all seriousness, it is a little upsetting to know that this core skill and competency is slowly starting to be potentially dropped from militaries around the world. I'm glad to see the Canadian military, along with the British military, are still sticking with, pun the pun, the use of bayonet training. You may ask, really though, is it something that is required anymore? And I have to kind of voice my opinion as to what bayonet training is all about. A lot of you are really looking into the core principle of trying to kill the enemy with a bayonet. And of course, yes, that is the end result of using the bayonet. You have to potentially close in with the enemy and kill them with a knife on the end of your rifle. But it's a lot more than that, folks. This kind of training really reinforces the fact that you may potentially go into a combat situation that you have no idea who the enemy is and may have to close in with them and have the aggression to be able to do so. And that's a lot to do with what this kind of training is all about. Controlled aggression and being able to utilize a weapon system that is totally out of your comfort zone and get close up with the enemy and engage them. Do you ever want to have to use a bayonet? No, I can safely say that if I'm ever in a situation where I have to use a bayonet, things have gone very, very wrong. You know, troops will still practice drill and ceremonial duties despite the fact that the need for marching into combat completely died out hundreds of years ago, and we don't really require to march against one another, bayonets, scabbards, smashing off one another, uh, you know, close quarter battles. We still sharpen our land navigation skills and other f key skills that we need, but the fact is that the technological advantages we have have diminished this key skill that really we need to have if the worst comes to worse. If we have got no ammunition left, nothing is available for us to fight the enemy other than knife and our rifle, then it has to come down to it, we're going to have to do so. But bayonet training really isn't just about learning to attach a pointy thing to the end of your boomstick and poking the blood out of people. As an old infantry sergeant once told me, it's about laying the fundamentals of everything else to do with combat fighting. Like I said, bayonet training was officially taken off the United States Army's basic training back in 2010 because it created schedule conflicts and other needed skills were more important for them. The training is always though conducted in stages with other militaries around the world, including the US Marine Corps which you're looking at right now. 
As I said, it is part of their core martial arts program. The first stage is to have the recruits train on sticks. Nothing too dangerous, nothing too deadly. Later on, they'll go into cotton swabs that are on the end of the sticks that are basically like gigantic, I guess, battling sticks. And this teaches a warfighter the importance of maintaining a positive footing while trying to overpower opponents. Literally anyone can take on anyone with these kinds of sticks. It's really not about size or strength, but more about control and technique, and of course, aggression. Learning to control your body while asserting dominance on the enemy is crucial in close quarters battle. Once you've mastered the sticks, you can actually move on to the bayonets themselves. Let's put this very bluntly. If you were asked, would you rather be killed with a knife or be killed with a bullet, what would you say? I'm going to be totally honest with you and say I would much rather have a bullet to my chest or to my head that would kill me fairly quickly than a knife being inserted into potentially any bodily part of my body, and that's terrifying to me. And that's the key. Bayonet fighting is not always about actually closing in and being able to use this weapon system on someone. It's more along the lines of if you see an entire platoon, section, or even a squad coming up towards you with these things placed on, for the most part, you're going to bail your trench and leg it. I know I certainly would, because these guys are not trained to march up nice and slowly and give a little prod like these folks are. This is basic training, they're going through it very slowly. In full real-time scenario, they are charging at you with every ounce of energy, aggression, and utter terrifying anger that you do not want to be anywhere nearer the, that bayonet. You wouldn't even get close to it. That's the key here, folks. It's not about actually getting the enemy with this kind of system. It's to actually kind of encourage the aggression and the engagement skill that you need that will eventually tie into you being able to use other weapon systems. If you can close in and kill someone with a bayonet, you can almost close in with any other weapon system from any range and do the same thing. It's to try and reinforce the key principle that at the end of the day, if you're joining the military and you're going to be in some sort of combat situation, you may potentially have to kill the enemy. If you can do so with a bayonet up close and personal with that controlled aggression, and notice how I said controlled aggression, I can almost guarantee you'll be able to push and pull the trigger when it comes to engaging with more heavier weapon systems such as a rifle, tank, or even artillery. You beak! The interesting thing to me is that I would love to put those individuals who criticize or are skeptical of bayonets and bayonet training into a training session and just to see what they take away from it afterwards. I can almost guarantee it's not going to be the, oh yeah, I get to now have the ability to kill the enemy with a bayonet. I think what they'll take away from it more is the aggression, the camaraderie, the fact that you have the balls and the tenacity to go forth and potentially do what is a very, very intimidating and overall pretty scary thing to do. Yeah, they're dummies right now, but it's really bringing the core of people out. I must admit, when I did my bayonet training in Army Foundation College Harrogate, you started to see those people who you thought were never going to be into a combat situation, that tough guy, that tough girl who's going to be able to actually do their job, and you put them in bayonet training and it completely spins you around 180 as you're like, wow, who is this person? I have no idea they even had that inside of them. It really does bring a totally different side of you out and is quite terrifying sometimes to those individuals who you never thought could be that way. I really do feel that there is a huge benefit to having bayonets and bayonet training, mainly for the fact that it just brings out that warfighting spirit. The fact that not only do you have the capability to use a long range weapon system, but you also have the ability to use it with professionalism and overall just pure warfighting aggression. Please folks, if you're doing training, enjoy your bayonet training. I loved it when I went through it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, very, very tiring because they absolutely beast you having running around all over the place to get your heart pumping and get that kind of aggression all primed. But just enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Many of us who are not in the infantry will only get to experience it maybe once or maybe not at all. So if you have the chance to actually do a full bayonet training session, get into it, enjoy it, and make the most of it. There are many people out there who say, oh yeah, well, I don't need to do it because I'm a whatever, I'm whatever else. Okay, well, if we ever do go to war or go to combat, I hope that those people who are behind a desk who said they never needed to do bayonet training don't come into my platoon when it comes to actually getting up front and personal, even if it is just using a rifle, because you need to be able to squeeze that trigger, whether it's from 200 meters away or 2 meters away with that bayonet. 
Folks, I appreciate you stopping by today, and I hope for those of you who have participated in bayonet training will take a little bit away from what I'm trying to say today. And for those of you who have never done bayonet training or don't really have a huge influence on what it's all about, I hope you learned something new about the fact that bayonets are here to stay. Thanks, folks. Bye-bye. <laughs>